Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Dr. Lim. Hi, hello, hello, everyone. Hi, Hi. Uh, today we're going to have another round of uh, live session, a sneak preview uh, prior to our webinar on this coming Thursday. So we'd like to recap uh, the last two weeks, I mean, last two live session, in fact, uh, what Dr. Lim has shared about um, how to be glasses free, like for those younger generation where they don't want to be on glasses, I mean, they don't like the glasses, you know, and what are the safe alternatives that is available in the market and how to um, deem the suitability as well as whether this kind of uh, LASIK procedures as an alternative, is it like how safe is the LASIK procedures and as well as Dr. Lim did share about the um, the correction, whether it would further regress after the surgery. So mainly what the live, uh, uh, past two live session was for a younger generation age group. So Dr. Lim, I guess today we're going mm -hmm. to touch more on the older generation. All right. I would say like yeah. older generation, but a more senior generation where those people who probably have reading problem low fa okay mm -hmm. and then uh or people who have like are short-sighted as well as low fa but on a more uh, senior age what would you know uh the alternatives for them you know if they would like to get rid of their glasses mm -hmm. okay um so actually the mainly here the we are dealing with uh, low fa that means people who don't want to use glasses when they are when they are reading Mm. So actually, there are, I would say often there are two alternatives. Uh, one is, uh, which I had also mentioned earlier on, is uh, actually monovision LASIK. Monovision LASIK is, uh, that's when we use LASIK to correct fully your distance vision for your dominant eye. And then for your other eye, we leave it a bit myopic, maybe like uh, 150 you know, mm -hmm. uh, degrees of myopia. So this will allow that eye to see near. So that means you have, one eye seen far and one eye is able to see near. But of course, the eye which is corrected for near will uh, will be a bit blurred for the distance. Okay, But then this uh, mono vision LASIK, uh, as I also mentioned earlier, is suitable only for maybe like 50 to 60% uh, of people. Some people, they may find that uh, uh, seeing, uh, this kind of visual system may be a bit, uh, they may feel a bit imbalanced and may not be able to accept it. Uh, mm. uh. So the other alternative, if, especially if we are not suitable for the uh, monovision LASIK, the other alternative would be actually to have a multi-focal uh, intraocular lens implants. That means what we do is actually uh, your existing or your natural lens in the eye, uh, the doctor will surgically remove it and then replace it with a multifocal intraocular lens. So this multifocal intraocular lens uh, similarly can correct refractive errors such as short sightedness. Uh, astigmatism as well as your press myopia or the low far. Mm -hmm. mm. So this multifocal intraocular lenses, I would say, is especially suitable for people who already have some degree of cataract. Eh? Uh, sometimes people in the press myopia age group, especially if they are like towards the fifties or a bit over fifties, uh, many times they also have some degree of cataract already. So in that case, uh, you can go for the multifocal uh, intraocular lens implant, which removes the cataract and at the same time can correct all your refractive errors plus your press myopia or your low fa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which means Dr. Lim, what you're saying is like for those uh, at the senior age, uh, not majority would be suitable for the, uh, what you call the monovision lazy correction. But if mm -hmm. let's say they start to develop cataract, there's another alternative with the intraocular lens. Uh, yes, correct implants mm -hmm. right where mm -hmm. you also have like choices of a uh, type of lenses to base on their suitability yes of it's course. also based on suitability right yes Not of course everyone is. yeah <laughs> yeah okay mm -hmm. so um if let's say they would do implant this and they do have a cataract let's say like for myself mm. i i do have cataract already and then you would advise me to 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 proceed with this um cataract removal where I would just to do an implantation of the multifocal lenses, then uh, how long does this lens would last in our eyes? Okay, the, the material that this lens is made of, as well as the design, actually it's, uh, it's, uh, it will last a lifetime. 
Okay. So there's no there's no such thing as after a few years you have to like periodically change it or anything. Mm, uh, mm, mm. It will last a lifetime. It's a permanent. It's a permanent. What you call uh yeah it's a implantation it, yes it's a permanent thing right? mm -hmm. it will last a lifetime because i think a lot of people wouldn't mm. understand and then they thought okay after i implant this you know a few years back have to change and replace like yes. spare parts like that you know yeah sometimes <laughs> i do get that question <laughs> but would there be any possibility where it will deteriorate okay um good question mm. actually uh yes some patients they come and they ask me is it that the after um no after some times, the, the cataract will come back again. Mm. Well, actually, it's not that the cataract comes back. Sometimes they may hear from their friends or relatives that sometimes they have had a cataract surgery done, mm. implanted lens. After some time, the cataract may come back. Okay. Actually, I think that's just a misunderstanding. What actually happens is that sometimes after a period of, maybe it could be a period of a few months or it could mm -hmm. be a period of one or two years after the surgery, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes after a period of time, the behind the lens that you have been that you have implanted behind the lens uh, a layer a thin layer of membrane may actually start to grow behind the lens mm. so if that happens then the the person will feel that the region is like starting to blur again huh? mm, mm. so this is actually what you call a posterior capsule opacity mm. so this happens in maybe i would say roughly maybe like 20 percent of uh, people who have had cataract surgery mm. it's a known thing actually it's uh, quite common actually mm. so when that happens some people may misunderstand and then they may think that oh the cataract has come back yes. but actually it's not that okay. it's just that sometimes in their case uh, behind the lens they have a membrane growing there okay so actually this uh if it happens if this happens it's actually quite a simple thing to actually to uh, so-called take care of uh. okay you don't need any kind of uh, like a repeat surgery or anything but you do need to uh, have a I would say a minor uh, laser procedure done. Uh, this, mm. this laser procedure is done in a sitting position. No? You don't have to like lie down for surgery. Uh. Mm. Just uh, uh, be in a seated position. Then the laser will, uh, what do you call it? The laser will actually remove that membrane in a very fast period of time. Maybe like maybe under two minutes only. Uh, and the mm. procedure is mm. completely painless. Mm. And the thing is, once you have had this laser to remove that membrane behind the lens, it will never come back again. That is permanent. Yes, for uh, sure. that is that, that that is permanent. So, so that's what your uh, or normal people will say. Oh, my cataract actually uh, yes, come back. Yes, many it's actually times like a say, secondary. Yes, actually, cataract. yes, the, actually, sometimes it's called a secondary cataract. Okay. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how it comes about. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people wouldn't understand because like, hey, why I had my cataract surgery done yeah. and then mm -hmm. no, I can't see very well after like, yeah. but usually how how soon it will develop like three months six months one year two it's years? a bit difficult to say if mm. you're on the younger side it may actually happen uh, in uh, within a period of months mm. uh, but if you are not like very young then it mm. may happen within like the one or the next one or two years or even mm. a few years later is mm. it pretty common dr lim um i roughly i would say around maybe like 20 percent of the time so that means 20%. like 10 people undergo the surgery maybe after some a period of time maybe two around two of them may they may have this this uh this uh happen happening to them i see mm. i see but it will be like what you say is done under a very simple yes, laser procedure it's easily remediable but then yeah. after that it will be like permanent yes already, after right? exactly permanent, it will never grow that memory will never come back okay okay mm. so that means at that after that moment you will actually enjoy the yes, uh, of freedom course. of glasses free but mm. i do believe that uh nothing is still as perfect as your younger age la, right well, of course i mean so, that, that's god given <laughs> same is the realistic expectation yes am i right <laughs> yes but whatever it is i believe that all these options they they allow they actually give you very functional vision that means vision mm. that that allows you to do uh, all your usual daily activities mm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about those people? Okay, we have one uh, inquiry from uh, Shanas. All right. Mm -hmm. Say hello, Dr. Lim. Hi, Shanas. If I have astigmatism and press biopia, which means it's low far, yes. can I still use the same lens? I think I think probably she's asking like, you know, uh, the variety of the lens that is available. Mm. So Dr. Lim, maybe you would like to elaborate a bit more about this. Okay, these intraocular lenses, actually, mm. um, if you just talk about multifocal, uh, multifocal mm. means that these lenses, they can correct your distance as well as your near vision. So if you have uh, astigmatism, yes, uh, there are more, certain models of these lenses which can actually correct your astigmatism as well. That means they can correct your astigmatism, your low-far, your short-sightedness, and even your far-sightedness. Uh. Mm. So basically, mm. any kind of 
refractive power can be corrected. Can be corrected. Yeah. So can I say in simple terms, like what we what we do with our glasses, Dr. Lim, mm-hmm. which means there are people who actually get their glasses prescribed with uh, short sight power and then they have astig and then they have like reading that means it's like yes. multifocal with the astigmatism. Mm-hmm. So which means like there's a three layer of uh, corrections. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. Can, yes. can I say it's the same principle on our glasses where we do the implant? The okay, correct type um, of correction. Yes, the things that the, the intraocular lens corrects is yes, it's basically the same as what you mentioned. Uh, your mm. your short sightedness or your far sight or your low far or your uh, astigmatism. But the principle of it is a bit different. If mm. you're wearing the multifocal lenses, okay. the uh, the way it works is that like uh, each part of the lens from upper part of the lens to the mm. to the lower part of the lens uh, there is a progressively difference in the power to correct for your distance intermediate and your your what they call your near vision right but if it's intraocular lens the uh, the power correction is not done that way okay in the sense that that lens is not like divided into like upper part middle part and lower part no? okay uh, the all this power correction is done with uh by utilizing the whole lens itself the optics of the lens itself okay so it's a different concept right? okay so if the person is yes some there are some people who i've encountered they just cannot tolerate glasses it's not mm. that they hate glasses but they cannot tolerate glasses when mm. they wear glasses they feel that they are very uncomfortable mm. so sometimes if you were to tell them that there's this option of multifocal lens they may they may feel a bit apprehensive they may feel a bit scared because they say i can't co- tolerate multifocal glasses mm. if i were to implant these multifocal lenses will i have the same problem mm. uh, so yes. that's why we have to make them understand that it's actually the power correction is a is a it's done by a different mechanism. It's not like the, the, the how it's done when you wear multifocal glasses. So it's okay. a different thing. So it doesn't mean that if you you don't like the glasses, I mean the multifocal glasses, yes. then you 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 actually not suitable for yes, the multifocal. Yes, doesn't mean okay. that you can't tolerate the uh, multifocal lenses because it's a completely different mechanism, different okay. system. But but I heard Dr. Lim. I mean, as I mean, this kind of technology evolves so so fast, right? Mm. So I believe like now they are better and i mean even better type of uh, multifocal lenses Mm -hmm. which actually you know uh able to give uh better visions or quality and things like that am am i right yes of Mm. course Mm -hmm. so okay we have another question from freda chin hi freda hi freda uh Mm -hmm. is there any circumstances that i cannot do the lens implant um well of course we you have to get a full eye assessment uh, before the before you are even I mean uh, should I mean before you even do the surgery of course, so if there are other like eye diseases then of course we will need to like uh, assess that first nah. mm. If your problem is just uh, if your eye is uh, quite healthy apart from the fact that you want to correct your your all these refractive errors or you have a bit of cataract, mm. uh, then I think it should be no problem. But the other thing is uh, one more thing is that. This uh most of these multifocal lenses they have a what they call it, a certain power range. Some people the eye, the uh, what do you call it, the eye power is really very very high. So mm. sometimes if it's really too high, it may actually exceed the power range of these uh, multifocal lenses. So in those cases, yes, uh, these people they not yes we, they may not be suitable for the multifocal lah. Yes, but yes. there's still other options available, right? Uh, Except for the multifocal, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can still, uh, I mean, I think for monofocal, which means you correct for the distance, is still available yes, in yes. a wider monofocal, range. Monofocal, yes, we can always, even mm. very high power, we can we can still correct at least your distance vision. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, okay. Oh, hi. Hi, on, on, on drag, right? On drag, CM. Mm, say hello, hi. Dr. Lim. Hello, hi, Andre. He say mm-hmm. hi to you. Uh, Andre, if you have any questions, you can post in the chat and then we can actually address your question. Uh, for those uh, who are actually joining us live, you have any question, you can actually post your question on live and then we'll get Dr. Lim to address to it. Uh, we have we here. Uh, hi, Dr. Lim. Hi. Is lens implant mm-hmm. or LASIK better? So I guess just now you have mentioned and touched <laughs> yeah. about this, but probably you yeah, no have problem. to, yeah, more understanding okay lens implant or laser actually uh it depends uh, I mean, uh, on the suitability uh. if mm. you are like let's say you are in the younger age group and you're not press biopic mm. then i would say laser would be a better option uh. it's mm. less invasive uh, and mm. it does 
it it uh, it solves your problem of your distance vision and being young you still have good near vision so you don't need any correction for that mm -hmm. if you are in the press biopic age group maybe with a bit of cataract coming on then i would say yes multifocal uh, lens implant would be a more uh, permanent uh, more permanent solution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dr lim since you're talking about this i have one question if let's say i'm not at a younger age group and then i'm suitable for lasik correction because yeah. i want to be glasses Mm -hmm. and um, I got my LASIK done and at the age where I got older and I developed cataract yes. can I still undergo cataract would it actually complicate it you know the, the cataract procedure or it will not well most of the time if you have had LASIK done um, there is no you, you can still of course you can still pro, uh, you can still have cataract surgery mm. um, it would be the in the best situation it would be if you can provide us the uh, your certain the eye measurements you know, the uh, what we call the corneal uh, keratometry readings mm -hmm. uh, uh, before your LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. It would be best if you have that. That would really help us in the calculation of your intraocular lens power. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you don't have that, like it's been done long ago and yeah. you have lost track of it, no problem. Mm -hmm. We can still do it. We can still we can still proceed the cataract surgery and a lens implant. Huh? But of course, we we'll, we have a different formulas uh, to calculate your the, the lens that we need to implant for you mm -hmm. right? and then if you have had a certain kind of uh, uh, some people i think quite long ago they do another type of refractive surgery you know mm -hmm. called a uh, rk radio this uh, radio mm -hmm. keratectomy mm -hmm. well that surgery is actually is very rarely done but i have encountered uh, i think a couple of patients who have had it done uh, so in those who have had that kind of surgery the rk surgery the cornea may be a bit uh, compromised a mm. bit structurally weak mm. surgery can still proceed but uh, then uh, there may be some complications which may happen uh, but mm. surgery can still still proceed actually yeah? mm. okay mm. okay that'll be good so uh would like to find out more and learn more about this how to be glasses free so click the link below uh, for registration to join us on our uh, coming webinar with dr lim his topic will be i hate glasses very directly mm. you know for anyone who wants to be glasses free join us at our live uh, zoom session on the 19th of august which is this coming thursday at 8 30 pm now if you join our zoom session you can have a direct interactions with dr lim during the q a sessions okay otherwise you we will also broadcast uh in our facebook uh, uh as live sessions uh then you can actually uh put on your questions uh, in the chats during the live session as well. So for those who actually uh, uh, participate in our webinar, you're actually entitled for a free eye screening. So uh, click the link below to register. Remember to join and like our Facebook and our YouTube channel. So thank you, Dr. Lim. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for thank those you. who have actually mm -hmm. joined us for this afternoon. Thank you. Thank Bye. You, everybody. Bye, Bye. Take care and be safe. <laughs> yeah. Signing off, Anna Lam and Dr. Mm -hmm. Lim. Okay, thank bye -bye. you.